What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to our Winterberry project. We finally have some exterior updates for you today, which makes me super excited. And we have some updates on the inside of the house as well. So we appreciate you guys tuning in, checking back on the project. If you guys are liking the series of building a home from start to finish, do us a favor, smash that thumbs up. Uh, it helps us a ton with the YouTube algorithm. Um, and let's just get started right into it. We have a driveway, finally. Mother Nature cooperated, gave us enough time of decent weather to get that poured. Get our sidewalks in, which that just got poured today, so I don't want to go climbing on that. We have stone throughout the whole front is done. We do not have the columns done yet, and we don't have the face of this done yet, so we've still got to get that wrapped, that wrapped, that wrapped, that all done and then that whole section still gets done but we're making progress our siding guys are making a whole bunch of progress too you guys to see some more color which i guess it's not so much color when it's white and black but this side of the house is coming together they got the soffits fascia gutter done on this side and they just started up on the gable today to get that soffit uh, fascia and all the trim boards in so that's done tomorrow, they'll be working on, well actually tomorrow, they won't be working on anything. Mother Nature, uh, today was the last decent day of the week and it's only Tuesday. Wednesday, rain, Thursday, rain, Friday, rain. So Mother Nature is putting a damper on our progress for the outside of the home, but such is life, I guess we get to deal with it. But give you guys a quick peek around the back here. You guys will see we got this. All done here. The actual back of this one section's finished, trimmed out. You'll see we've got our, our downspouts are down on this side. And one thing I want to point out, you know, I've told you guys in the past, we absolutely love working with these siding guys. They're just attention to details, tremendous. So the seams, or I should say the joints where one board meets, are perfectly staggered up the wall as you go. And then you go to the next set of seams and they're perfectly staggered on the way down. I don't know, maybe that doesn't matter to some people, they don't care. For me, a little bit of OCD, it makes a huge difference when you've got that uniformity going all the way up and not just seams randomly thrown all about throughout. So I just kind of really like the way that looks. We got one stone column left right here to do and that'll be kind of the last of what we got for stone so the guys are going to finish this side of the house with siding they're going to finish that gable up there and then they're going to come around and knock out this back section here they're going to knock out all this up here all the way up to the roof line there and they're going to work their way kind of around but once they get over to here they're actually only going to do up to the soffits and fascia and keep that theme around the side of the house because we desperately need to finish our uh, backfill and final grade so we could get started on landscaping so once they make it around this side and they get to the front of the house we're going to bring the equipment out get a bunch more fill brought out get all this done and with them working on the front of the home they won't be in the way of everything back here then we could start landscaping because they can come around after they're done with the front and do all the rest of the house working off that second story, or I should say the roof off the first story to do all of the second story. That way we can try and get two things done at once. You know, as you guys know, if you've been following along on this build or a few months behind, uh, behind schedule here due to a whole bunch of issues early on. So we're trying to play catch up and we may have a client interested in buying the house and they need to be in by a specific date. And to hit that date, it's gonna require some multiple trades uh, on site. So mainly landscapers and siding guys, which normally don't work anywhere near each other. And we've had some questions on how this is going to detail out. This exposed concrete uh, will actually get siding basically starting at, well, first it'll be trim and then it'll be siding starting there going down at an angle uh, to where it will meet up with 
uh, kind of you can see where our grade line is going to be with what's been coated on the back there. These are actually getting raised up eight inches. Normally, you would not set these before you were done uh, with siding, but again, uh, we got a late start on siding. So we've had to do a couple things out of order, not a huge deal. We could work around them and just kind of makes a little bit of extra work, but we'll, we'll push through. So I will catch up with you guys on the inside of the house, seeing as we've wrapped up our exterior tour for what's been updated. Actually, we're gonna do a quick pause in the garage. So we had talked to you guys about what we're using for baseboard in the past. Here it is, uh, we actually have it on site now. We've got our one by 10, which is gonna be for the basement and the whole main level and then our one by eight for the second floor. And then we've got all of our casing for the windows and doors there. And the guys are starting uh, to cut doors down and get casing on doors and get those all ready to go. We've got the rest of the doors over here. And this is our, our Trex deck came in. So this is the color, almost black, uh, that we're gonna be doing for the deck and the fascia for the deck. So it's kind of a little bit of what we've got going on out here. I see my screens all showed up. And that's kind of funny because I never released my screens for delivery. So I'm not sure why they're here. So I'm gonna to have to get an answer to that. So let's take a peek inside and I'm gonna have something to show you right as soon as we get in the door here. And that's if I don't put a hole in the wall with the door handle. The guys have got all of the base cabinets in for our bench here. And again, these match the cabinets in the kitchen as you guys have seen. And then we're gonna do, you know, like coat hangers and stuff here. And we're going to do quartz tops that match the kitchen in there. And we've got our built-ins going here in the laundry room. We've got all the cabinets in the laundry room. And you guys see, we've got a ton of cabinets in here. And in here, you know, just shelves, you know, a little storage space. You know, hooks here for brooms, miscellaneous. Just that way, this stuff is out of the way. You're not seeing it in the house. So let us know in the comments down below is this enough space for storage in the laundry room? For me, I've never had a laundry room that big. It seems like a whole bunch of space. All right, I know you guys have seen some of the cabinetry in the kitchen. We actually have it all set in place and mounted now. So coming around the corner here from the mud room, you know, we've got the whole islands mounted and the microwaves going there. This was mounted last time you guys were out. The face plate for that is right there. We've got to mount the blower get everything plumbed, and then we can put that face plate on. And I know I had shown you guys this channel handle before when it was still wrapped. Now you can see that's kind of the color with it being black. And same thing on this lower level. So no hardware, you just get this super sleek reveal. It's just like a black line almost looks like, you know, just a, a black stripe. But there's just enough room for your hand to get inside. Pull these out and you'll see we carry that darker color from, you know, these cabinets and those cabinets to the interior of this. So these really, really dig these cabinets. The, I know I've talked about the install has been a bit of a bear. It has been a real bear. Um, my guys have been installing cabinets for a long time. They said hands down, far and away, the most difficult cabinets to install that they've ever been involved with. But I don't know, I think it's worth it. I think the kitchen is turning out super sharp. I can't wait to show it to you guys with quartz, uh, which we've called for countermeasure so they can come out and get everything measured for us hopefully later this week if not first thing next week but remember this island is going to have the top extends way out here water falls off both sides it's just going to be sharp i forgot to order the pocket door for that so that's the only door that's missing uh, that'll be here in about a week and a half not a big deal you know we don't need it really right now uh, the painters are still going to be out in a little ways before they get started so I don't know. Let us know in the comments below what you think of the kitchen. How's it turning out? What would you change? Or would you just leave it as is? I'd be curious to know what other people think. And coming through to the master, you'll see we have a lot of cabinets still in here that need to be installed, but we've made some good progress in here. And I'm glad I was able to stop in before they fill this because we've had a couple of people ask. They wanted to see the Dietra heat before it got covered. Uh, but first you'll see We've got our cabinets starting to go in that go on the side of the tub. You'll have a whole other rack of them that go in on that side. And then we're gonna have quartz tops going from wall to wall covering all of this. The one thing we haven't decided yet, what material do we do off the front and side of the tub here? Do we carry the quartz and waterfall over the end? 
or do we carry the floor tile up and onto the face or uh, what our tile guys recommended which i think might look super sharp is to do that in the black herringbone or i think it's actually a black chevron that we've used on the tile inlays for the other showers with the built-in niches so what i'll do is i'll plug a picture in here and you guys let me know of the three which would you do quartz that matches the top that type of tile up the front or the black chevron on the front and the sides of this curious what everybody else thinks. I don't have an opinion yet, but I really need to get my opinion figured out by like tomorrow morning. So I don't hold these guys up. So um, what you'll see now is our Dietra mat, our Dietra heat mat is all down. And you can see these little wires that run all over. They go over into the toilet room there and I don't want to get any stuff kind of in them. You'll see they come through all the way through here. We come in and you're not going to get to see it in the shower, but it, because we've had to continue our waterproofing, but it does go to the inside and moves its way up through there and the bench is heated. So that teacher heat goes all the way through here, comes through and they actually started inside the shower and work their way out because you cannot cut this stuff. So you have to use exactly how much is in the, the roll that you purchased. So we did the math on how much square footage we had to cover. And then they tell you how much you need and they give you a recommended space to space it out. So it takes a little bit of time to get it nailed down right. And you'll notice we have one area where we didn't heat and that is under like far underneath the uh, floating vanity. There's no reason to waste the energy or the materials to run the heat there. And the heat, you'll see, comes out of the wall right there. And it runs up here, and that's where your controller goes for the actual floor. So inside of this has got a temperature probe that'll monitor the temperature of the floor. Gives that feedback to the controller that'll be there. And you just program the controller, say, I want my floors to be this temperature at this time or constantly and the controller does it all for you. And I think we bought the controller where you can control it from an app on your phone as well. I'd have to check and make sure. So what do you guys think? I want to say extra on this project. We probably spent between labor and materials to do the heat probably around $3,000, $3,500. Would it be worth it to you to have heated heated floors in your master suite or would you save the money use it elsewhere and just have regular tile floor always curious as you guys know i'm always asking you questions curious what other people think because we build speculative houses so we kind of like to get a feel for what people want in their home so this is one of those things would you like to have it or not is it worth the money to me 100 percent worth it without question um, i will not build a house for myself without heated floors in the master suite um, the rest of the house really doesn't bother me much. Um, I probably for a personal home wouldn't do the other main floors. I would, however, definitely do radiant heat in the basement slab. So let's jump upstairs and see what the guys have got cooking up there. All right. So on a previous video, I'd let you guys know that the window in the upstairs bathroom was in the wrong place and kind of just out of curiosity asked if you guys would move it. I'd already made the decision um, to move it, but I wanted to show you guys what it looks like done. So if you haven't seen this, you can go back and check out the old video. Um, but the right edge of that window was off into the shower. So now it is where it belongs, in the proper place. And shower is all done being tiled. And then there's that chevron look again. This is all done. And again, this is a mess in here because black grout makes a freaking mess. So that's pretty much all wrapped up. We'll take a cruise over here. I think we actually have a couple doors mounted this way. Yeah, we do. So you guys will see our door style we went with, two panel. Now these are solid core doors. And on top of that, they're not solid core MDF. They're at, you'll actually be able to see they're real wood. So real wood, solid core doors, something uh, in our area you don't see very much of anymore. Um, You'll see a decent amount of solid core, but not actual real wood, just MDF. So, and then one other thing, we did black hinges on these because we're gonna be doing black hardware. So black hinges and black hardware. 
And this is, you know, we talked about doing a casing that's got a little bit of a, a reveal. It's just got that little notch in it, kind of all the way around. And then our baseboard will just be that one by. I think it's going to look super sleek. We got our vanities mounted here. You guys have already seen that. And our vanities mounted there. So, so that's what's changed up here. We've got the bathrooms pretty much all done. We've got doors starting to go in. I saw another, as you guys saw in the garage, we've got a door on the table down there waiting to come in. So they are hoping to be done, uh, today's Tuesday, hoping to be done with everything on the inside of the house next Friday um, and, and not paint, but all of the trim, the doors, uh, the master suite, all that kind of odds and ends of finish work. And then I'm gonna have some more stuff to throw at them like I always do. Uh, they finish what we're supposed to do and I always find more things to do after the fact. It just seems to be the story of my life. Let me kick some lights on down here real quick. I almost know what I'm doing with these light switches. I got them all on the first try this time. So the bar, we've showed it to you framed, but now we've actually got cabinets in. So you guys can kind of see, you know, again, this is all going to be quartz top for you here, and then a secondary quartz top along the upper portion. And then we've got under cabinet refrigeration going in. I don't remember what's going in that one. Microwave here. This one is kept open for like miscellaneous storage for bigger stuff. We did, you know, we did outlets. So you've got power on the top of the counter here, even though you've got a bunch of outlets along the back. And then a big storage cabinet uh, on this side, next to where the seating's at. So yeah, you could store board games or miscellaneous or whatever you want in there. And yeah, in this, I told you guys we're gonna paint black. Uh, on this MDF, we're going to do like a trimmed out one by detail, which I don't know what pattern we're going to do yet. We'll sketch something up, figure it out on the fly. So as always, we appreciate you guys taking these tours with us. Uh, we love that you take the time to see our homes. And if you're ever in the Northwest Indiana area and you want to see one of our projects, as long as it's not somebody else's home at that point, we still have it available. Be happy to take you on a tour. Um, just comment below and we'll get in touch with you. And if you have any questions, if you're somebody who's building a home or you're about to build your own home, you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. We'll do everything we can to get you an answer and we will catch you on the next episode.